The seventh question now, say the ever favorite of J.E. Main, the semiconductor, right? Now, what does it say? If an emitter current changes by 4 milliampere, that means the value of delta IE, that is equals to 4 milliampere, all right? The collector current that changes by 3.5. So delta IC, that's equals to 3.5 milliampere. I need to find the value of beta, all right? So how would we define beta? That's a ratio of delta IC by delta IB, right? So precisely speaking, that's beta AC, all right? But since the question did not uh, specifically talk about beta DC or beta AC, we got to be a little bit careful. And if you just look at the data, it implies that the question is actually talking about beta AC. So beta AC, by definition, is delta IC by delta IB. That's how it comes. Now delta IC, that is 3.5. Now how about delta IB? You know, delta IB will be delta IE minus of delta IC. So that is 0 0.5. So the value comes out to be 7. Now, beta, it's a unitless, dimensionless quantity. So the option, that will be the first option, OK? So that was about seventh question. Now it's time we move to question number 8. Question number 8. Now again, see, J main, it is living up to its reputation because unit and dimension, that is a chapter where it's almost a guarantee that you would get question from this chapter. Now, what does it say? W is the work done. Alpha, beta, they are unknown. X is the displacement, right? K is the Boltzmann's constant. And capital T is the temperature. Now, please don't confuse with this capital T and this T here. In the dimensional formula, capital T is the time, while here, capital T is the temperature. So you got to be a bit careful with that, all right? And we got to find the dimension of beta, all right? So this is what we get, see. Have a look at the expression. Now, what is the strategy? The strategy is very simple. The power of E, you know, that is dimensionless. So what comes in the power of E? We have x squared by alpha kt. Now, let me just write a subscript theta so as to distinguish it from time. Okay, capital T is the temperature. I just wrote with a subscript. Now, this is dimensionless, all right? The DL is not the driving license. It's dimensionless, all right? Now, let's see what is the further step. Now, I come with this logic that x square will be L square. Alpha is same. Now, see, you need not find the dimensional formula for Boltzmann constant separately and temperature separately because, you know, 3 by 2 kT is the expression of kinetic energy. And it's a very simple expression. You know, I did not bring anything from a remote corner. It's a very uh, simple expression, and that's the energy. So ml squared T minus 2 and that comes out to be dimensionless. Now this capital T, of course, that's a time. So I've just written the dimensional formula for what? Of course, for the energy. Now let's see further L square. L square gets canceled there. So I get the dimensional formula for alpha that is equals to m minus of 1 t square. That is great. So we found the dimensional formula for alpha. How did I do that? Just to make the entire thing dimensionless, you know, the m t minus 2, that has to be canceled with the dimensional formula for alpha, straightforward. But then I also need to calculate now the dimension of beta because that's what the question has asked about. Now, you know, for the exponent, there's a nice property Apart from the power being dimensionless, the entire exponent, even that's dimensionless. So guys, what would I get? The dimension of alpha beta square, 
that is the dimensional formula for W. So this comes something like this. Alpha beta square will have the dimensional formula for work done, isn't it? That's what we do. Cool. So beta square. Now, please excuse me. I'm not going with all those bigger brackets. No formality. We are in the solution session. So we expect you are well versed with all those things. The dimensional formula for energy, ml square t minus 2. Downstairs, alpha. So here's my alpha. So that's m minus 1, right? t square. And when I solve this, I get it as m square, l square, t minus 4. But that's the dimensional formula for beta square. We need to find the dimensional formula for beta. So it's just a square root of that, mlt minus 2, option number 3. That is the correct one. So for this question, option number 3 comes out to be the correct one. Cool. Now let's go to the next one, the ninth question. And question number 9, all right, it's something related to thermodynamics. Now just don't get scared with the question, all right? Let's say step by step. N moles. That's a number of mole which is given. N mole of a perfect gas, that's an ideal gas, undergoes a cyclic process. And it says A to B is isothermal expansion at temperature T. Now here, let me just show where is that AB. There is AB. And in the entire process AB, the temperature is capital T. That is what the question says. It's the rectangular hyperbola. The volume has double. That means the pressure would be halved. So that is understood. All right. Now AB. Now what about BC? Isobaric compression. Now we can see the figure and the question uh, simultaneously. Isobaric compression. Once it reaches there, the pressure is constant. The volume decreases. Right. Therefore, compression at P2 to initial volume V1. And eventually, isochoric change leading to change of pressure from P2 to P1. And eventually, you know, this completes the cycle and that happens by isochoric process. So the entire, you know, cycle comprises of three steps. The isothermal expansion, isobaric compression, and isochorically, the pressure has been increased. You get that point? Now, I got to calculate the work done. Now, here are the options. So, we got to match with the given option. Now, say, how do we calculate the work done, right? Here's the figure. Now, in order to calculate the work done, we know we calculate the area enclosed by this cycle. But because this one, is not a linear one. Had it been a linear, then we would have seen that, okay, it matches with a triangle and we would start computing. So I know that work done is calculated by this area, but practically it's not feasible. So what we do, we'll calculate individual work and then we will add them. But there's a discount. The discount is work done in this process is zero because that's isochoric. Now, this work is positive, this work is negative. So the first thing is that the work done, total I'm doing, NRT, natural log, V2 by V1. That is the expression of work done in an isothermal expansion. And that is a isobaric process. So if I calculate the work done, you know, that is plus P2 of final volume minus of initial volume and there will be a negative sign which we had estimated beforehand itself. Now here's the case that's going to be NRT that is the work done natural log of 2 and minus of P2 times V1. So yes we are ready there but if you look at the option I think I can show you in the same frame. See, the first one is, all right, let me do it here so that you can see the option and what have we calculated so far in a single frame. 
and that's really going to help you. Look, now if you just look here, the option demands the entire answer to be brought in terms of t. That's not a problem, okay? So we need to customize the option according to that. So the whole thing is that how do we go with p to v1? Now I think that's quite a simple thing because in the entire isotherm, you see the temperature is constant. Now in the entire isotherm, like if I talk here, how much is the pressure? The pressure is P2, I'm talking about this. How much is the volume? Twice of V1 and that will be equals to NRT because everywhere the temperature throughout the isotherm, that is T and I can always use the expression PV equals to NRT, isn't it? So let's see now, this is all the small uh, shift we require. So that is NRT natural log 2 minus P2 V1 is NRT divided by 2. Hey guys, now we've calculated the work done and you could see it exactly matches with option number 3. So that was about question number 9. Let's go to the 10th question. Now if I go to the 10th question, what does it say? It is from the kinematics, the ever lovely kinematics. The velocity time graph has been given and the shape is A M B. We got to calculate the acceleration time graph. Now this is a little bit of gift given to you within that pressurized moment of the examination. A question like this is really, really a refreshing one. If you have a VT graph, how do you compute the AT graph? By computing the slope. So what's the slope of this graph? That's going to be a negative constant. And for this, that's going to be a positive constant. So where do I have? First negative constant, then positive constant. All right, all right. OK, option number four. First negative constant, then positive constant. That is the acceleration time graph. Let's go to question number 11. 